Welcome back guys. Today I want to show you how to assemble your dry sum pump purely because I could not find any information on this particular pump for my car anywhere online. How to assemble it, blueprints, drawings, nothing. There's a few pictures of um, previous for sale ads. Um, nothing else exists. I even found uh, a PDF from uh, Renault um but it completely bypasses the the, the pump itself um okay that's a good one yeah. all right so what do we have over here we have a Renault formula 3 dry sump pump i have fitted one to my car recently and you can find this video in this by following this link do you really want to say anything or reveal anything but i feel like i need to warn other people potential buyers of the same the same pump i bought it new second hand um, it was brand new not used never fitted but it was bought by a friend a couple of years ago to be fitted to his race car unfortunately uh, things change, plans change, and he had to put a stop to his project. And uh, it was just laying in his garage, kind of collecting dust. All in original um, packaging, all in original um, sealing bags and containers. So it was new, but I didn't buy it new. Um, there was a slight issue, which I found the hard way. Um, there is supposed to be this gizmo sitting in there with the spring that's the prv pressure relief valve basically what it does it's when your pump creates enough pressure in your system let's say 80 psi 90 psi as soon as it exceeds that the valve opens up and the oil starts bypassing into the main chamber around hence stopping you creating extra extra pressure oil pressure preventing you from blowing seals and all sorts and stuff like that it was completely missing it was completely missing from the pump assembly don't ask me why don't ask me how um it was just completely missing i have i have it on good authority that the previous guy my friend did not even unscrew this he he wasn't aware that it was missing and stuff like that and I actually found another few people who had the same issue, all bought from the same manufacturer roughly the same time. And um, yeah, so basically without this valve, uh, oil will constantly be bypassing, not creating any pressure. Um, it was creating around 5 to 6 psi of pressure at idle. Um, Obviously, I didn't drive the car. I kind of started it and um, there was all, yeah, it seemed like there was a problem. So we needed to investigate. And when we found there was no valve, obviously contacted the, the, the company who supplied the, the pump originally. They were kind, kindly agreed to obviously look at them, check them over and fit any missing parts. Um, um, Unfortunately, due to COVID and coronavirus and all this bullshit and a lot of people on furlough and stuff like that, it took them a little longer than I would have wanted to. But I'm uh, at this stage, I'm definitely not naming and shaming anyone. You know, uh, mistakes can be made as mad as I was when I realized uh, the PRV valve was missing. Um, they, yeah, they managed to um, manufacture a new one. And um, it is somewhat simple but complicated part at the same time because you know you need to know the tolerances essentially what it is is just a plunger with a spring that you can adjust by using um by using this this cup with uh, with a lock nut um like that and it kind of floats inside this little cup and the whole assembly literally goes inside like that and then we have a plunger with a spring. I'm not, yeah, like that. And this thing just bolts on top just to, there's no particular torque 
because there is a rubber o-ring just sits there and then you can adjust it with this but um i'm gonna leave it as it is preset for now um okay on to the pump itself because when i was opening it up i was a bit not confused but um I've never opened up a dry sump pump for some professionals who actually do do this the job day in day out could be obvious I'm not a mechanic um, I'm not an engineer I'm literally a hobbyist I just do it because I love doing it I don't have any qualifications so to me it's all it's all new I've never seen a dry sump pump before and obviously naturally you know YouTube is your go-to encyclopedia of uh, engineering marvels and stuff and um, naturally I couldn't find any information, zero, nothing, da-da. So yeah, I had to kind of just open it up and do the thing I do. And um, so it has three main parts, the body of the pump. You have the first end cap where you have your PRV valve. That's the one uh, section that uh, creates the pressure. Um, and this is the cap for the um, scavenge section. This is a two section pump, basically meaning there's two sections, one here, one in there, scavenge and pressure. The scavenge section is always double the capacity of the pressure section because scavenge is essentially what it is. Dry sump is flat uh, sump, has no oil in it. So the scavenge need to scavenge it as quickly as possible. So there is always no oil in it. So there is always enough oil in a tank. So that, that's what scavenge does. It sucks all the oil from the pan and puts it into your reserve tank that sits somewhere in a car, whether it's in a boot, in the engine bay or in the um, uh, passenger compartment. Um, there is one shaft. It's directly driven through a belt, through either crank pulley or auxiliary belt pulley. This is where your drive uh, drive comes into. Usually it has sort of uh, rubber dumpers and stuff just to prevent from uh, necessary vibrations and stuff like that. And inside what you have is literally two parts. Um, effectively, it's a bit like a rotary engine. That's how it works. That thing rotates inside like that and if every time you get a bit more oil in, it just pushes you through around, creating pressure. And they see it like that inside, and this thing is on a shaft, so that thing does not wobble. So it's the outer, outer ring that kind of goes around in location. And um, you have ceiling O-rings, and you have a little... I know the name of it. It's on a tip of my tongue I can't remember now um, somebody will point me out but yeah it's a little keyway I think somebody might call it differently um, so I think we can safely try and assemble this thing now so I always use a bit of this amazing not an advertisement in any way. I just love using this stuff. This is effectively heavy duty oil stabilizer. This thing is amazing for assembling engines and any moving parts because look at that. It's just so sticky. Perfect. Prevents from like excessive wear on anything. So yeah. And obviously it's oil soluble because it's supposed to go inside your oil. Take it like that, then we take our keyway, we slot it inside, and this thing just slots like this. Now we put one of the O-rings. So on this particular pump, this side doesn't, it's, it's not, you can't really get it wrong. This is the only orientation for, for the bolts and they are all slightly different size as well. So you have a very long one 
two kind of medium ones and uh, two short ones. But some of you may notice there's six of them because this one is actually a locking bolt that um, locks the, the outlet pipe. You fit it almost last. So let's fit it. So we go, this one is the long one here. Unfortunately, I have no idea what the correct torque is. There is no information whatsoever. So we are kind of doing it by feel, but because there is a rubber O-ring, um, from my experience, you don't need to tighten it too hard because otherwise you will just squash it too much. So it should be, should be fine. Hi, Rob. Hello. We have a guest. Rob, the Bob, the builder. Come say hello. Hey guys. Ah, uh, there you go. See, he is really tall. <laughs> Just in case you want. Yeah, and as you notice, I'm wearing my merch. You ask him why Rob is not wearing merch? He's supposed to be my number one fan. <laughs> it's hood. It's too hot. Come on. It's too hot. Yeah. My merch is too hot. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click that like button and that bell icon as well, so you don't miss anything. Also, if you want to support my channel, why not buy one of my hoodies? Okay, let's assemble the scavenge side of the pump. There is one little tricky trick bit that I found the hard way that It needs to go only one way and not the other way. I'll show you in a second. Let's put some assembly lube oil. Okay, so this thing slots in. And as I explained before, that's how it works. It rotates and it captures oil in here and then it squeezes it round and pushes it that? all the way around. So if you oh, did it in reverse, it would be the same and, and it touches. So it really does. Yeah. They're volutes. Yeah. The end cap. I didn't know this before, but apparently this is very, very crucial. It's obviously cut out here and there's a cut out on this side coming from the oil pan itself. I thought that this thing can only go one way. Well, as you can see, some holes do not align, but it aligns like this. That's the wrong way because this thing needs to be opposite of that cut out. The reason being is that when oil from the scavenge pipe gets into this first chamber. This is how the cog starts rotating. So it picks up all this oil, it keeps it in this pocket, it moves it around, around, around. And when it comes to this point, if this cutout is on this side, it pushes it out completely before returning to its original position where it picks up more oil and each of these five chambers effectively does the same thing constantly carrying it from one corner to another so yeah make sure those passages are opposite each other otherwise the pump will not work effectively what it will do is we'll do the same thing as it did before here where there's two cutouts it will literally just run oil around the same chamber in a circle without actually creating any pressure and before I forget, O-ring. You definitely don't want to run a pressurized system without any sort of seal. Making sure the cutout is on the opposite side. Align it and on this pump, on this side, um, all the bolts are the same size. Just so there is information there. Yeah. There's none, zero. There is information there because lots of people will be worried. Uh, Not on this pump. 
No, not nothing. Honestly, oh, sure. I spend months looking for yeah, yeah. information and I'm pretty good at finding information. There is nothing. All right, guys. So this is how you assemble a pump for F4R engine, uh, Renault, uh, that came off uh, Formula 3 FR2000. Yes, too many fancy names and stuff. But the main reason, I could not find any information and I know there is quite a few of them exist and maybe somebody will find it uh, useful when they repair them, disassemble, assemble or purely want to see what this thing is all about on the inside. Um, yeah, I hope you like this video. Um, if you didn't, then please do leave me a message. Do let me know what exactly did you not like because I want to improve. I want to be a successful YouTuber. You see, merch and everything. By the way, you know where to find it. Just leave me a message and uh, yeah, they're good quality and you're supporting a good cause. Um, um, I lost the word there. Um, anyways, yeah, don't forget to subscribe, uh, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.